Almost a month ago, we released our earthquake forecast for the remainder of 2018. It was based on similar patterns to previous years in both earthquake occurrences and solar polar field activity. Our now multiply cited study correlating them with the largest earthquakes. If you haven't seen that outlook, it is advised you do so at the first link beneath this video. It has been a southerly solar magnetism Earth has endured for most of the last few years. Hopefully you recall this graphic. Please recall that this was as of early June 2018 when we were well on our way to meeting last year's marks in earthquake drought already, which included the longest magnitude 7 earthquake drought since records began. And the last month has brought little change. The last magnitude 7 event was now more than four months ago. And when we examine the magnitude 6 earthquake activity, we find generally below average occurrences. We expect three per week and got about one or two for the most part. But before the two we've had in the last nine days, it was more than a month since the last one had occurred. At three per week average, a blank month is insane. And looking back to early May when a 6.9 began the Hawaii volcano uptick, all the sixes since then have been on the low end of the scale. So come back to this and please update in your brain that we are now four months into the magnitude 7 earthquake drought this year. By the way, those are expected once every 20 days at the magnitude 7 range just for some perspective on this and the nearly six month drought we had last year. In early June, we had only seen one magnitude 6 earthquake in the last 30 days. Now we have seen two, we'd expect about 12 or so, but that includes that 33 days without one at all. Please recall that last year's earthquake drought occurred in the negative southern magnetism influence of the solar fields, and it wasn't until the overall force went north and positive near the start of July that a few magnitude 7 events culminated with an 8.2 in Mexico in September as the fields were peaking north. Last episode, we saw how we were approaching that similar rise again this year. We saw all the historic examples, and while we've been in the negative down, so to speak, our earthquake drought this year has come together as well. Well, let's get another month of data on the sun, and we're at the end of June now. And let's look back to the start of this polar field cycle with the reversal during sunspot maximum all the way to now. The latest update, far right, shows the field influence having broken into the north. Yellow line is the total force adding blue and red together, north and south, and it has crossed the baseline. This means that we can begin to look ahead to the end of the magnitude 7 drought, and it probably will not be as long as last year. There is no telling what the peak of this year's northern influence will look like up at the top of this mountain we're climbing now, but we can expect it to be around the same August to October period when the northern fields peak in positive force. The actual date of Earth's maximum northerly orbit is September 8th once again. Earth will be just over 7 degrees north from the solar system equator. Now the sun's fields vary enough that we'll need to watch for the peak in northern magnetism somewhere within about 5 weeks of that. Another link you have below is to our electroquake video. That is a good place to start learning the future. We'll do these updates as necessary. Be safe everyone.